Brian here from quantlabs.net. I just want to tell you about an event I'm having online called Your Retirement, Your Stock Picks, and Your Automated Trading uh, here on uh, the 19th of May, which is, uh, sorry, 19th of June, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Here's what we're going to talk about. First things first, your retirement when it comes to, uh, you know, here's an article on CNN regarding, you know, your 401, your Canada RSP or whatever your retirement pension is supposed to be. Uh, it may not be as glamorous as you may think um, down the line. I think people are already humming and hawing that they probably may not have a, a, a retirement. So just like the soup. Uh, kitchen Nazi, no retirement for you. Um, so I think you may want to beef up your uh, retirement funds uh, by finding ways to trade, uh, to, to get a more cu- a guaranteed, consistent uh, income stream. Uh, I shouldn't really use the word guaranteed because nothing's guaranteed, but just if you understand the markets and knowing what to look for, um, you can do fairly well from it, but that's what I'm trying to do is just to do exactly that, but just having a more, not only conservative, but just a more consistent, less risky ways of uh, looking at the market. So uh, I'm not going to go into this article, but funny thing is right beside that article in the news app from CNN was this one, investing in stocks. I thought the timing was quite odd on the retirement, and then there's another article on investing in stocks. The funny notion is everyone thinks that stocks is the best place to go. Um, yes and no. Um, I think from the professionals that I talked to that do well, they actually think that stocks is the last thing they go into, but they'll t- trade currencies, futures, options, and other asset classes. So, <clears throat> so that brings me to uh, where I'm at. Um, so on the 19th of uh, June, what I want to talk about is exactly um, retirement plans with uh, just plain uh, investing and trading. I want to, I'm going to keep this a very open uh, Q&A kind of way, nothing formal, with any, no formal uh, presentation. And then from there, uh, I'm hoping to get some more seasoned traders and talk about how they're doing it, or better yet, how what their outlook is. So, so we'll just say more serious and uh, I'll just say profitable traders. You know, I don't know. I've got guys in their mid thirties doing well. They have a very very good future, um, and uh, brings me back to other types of investments. So let me just. Uh, Let's go over this in a minute. No. And uh, we'll talk about the uh, benefits of um, automated algo trading as well. So let me talk about this. Uh, really what started this um, topic was uh, a few people earlier in the week, actually a few days ago, wanted to know um, about real estate. Uh, I'm no expert in real estate with rental income and living off of the equity and the property value increase. Uh, there's also um, other types as well. Mm, some kind of franchise they may set up and live off of the cash flow from that. And then we'll talk about, I'll talk about that in a minute. And then here is the benefits of it. So let me address these. So um, let me just talk about the benefits first. Uh, Obviously, um, it's automated. I should say autopilot is probably a better way to put it, if you know what you're doing. <clears throat> um, and uh, let's okay. So let's talk about these types of other investments. Like I said, I've had a, a variety of people. This is this is these are. I'm going to show you some stats, which is very important to really know. Um, okay, so I live in Canada. And this is another reason why I'm doing this, but I just want to show you these charts. Pretty scary stuff. Um, we want St. Louis, the St. Louis Fed, Fred. Okay, when you look at this chart, 
<clears throat> so what we're doing here, along comes 2006, 2008. Now, basically this chart is the household debt to GDP for Canada, okay? This is what sparked this topic and why I'm doing what I'm doing to go into automated trading. So here we are in 2008, the crisis hits. Now, Canada was fortunate, it wasn't have, like, heart, like badly hit, like let's say the States, and I'll show you that in a minute. But we have the current Bank of England, uh, uh, pre, um, what do they call it, chairman um, for uh, Mark Carney, who, who managed this period quite well. So he kept uh, Canada in a pretty good uh, financial uh, position. Along comes, uh, we flatline on the debt per, for the household. Then all of a sudden, house prices started to rise in, in two big cities of Toronto, Vancouver. People started putting on um, loans on their home credit lines and just the uh, the the debt for homes started to skyrocket. So this this is what we're looking at. It broke through 100. And when you break it through 100, I'd be pretty scared of that. The reason I say that is because basically what's driving the GDP, not traditional manufacturing or, or services, because we pretty well hollowed out our economy. The only thing that's really fueling our GDP is credit from the bank's financial, and that's of course feeding into the debt that households here in Canada take. So if you're planning to buy real estate, okay, and use that as an income stream, there's two big assumptions you're taking on. One, you think that your property value will continue to go up. I'm not sure about that, and I'm gonna show you why in a minute. And then this is what will probably most likely happen with the US. Um, and the other thing you have to always factor in is if there is a correction in the real estate market, uh, there's that. And then the other thing that you need to be worried about is, let's say you do buy property, you do get a mortgage, to uh, for a second, third, fourth property, and I know my neighbor's got three properties right now, and all she does is massage therapy, probably making 15, 20 bucks an hour. So it's classic US, um, ooh, look at me, I'm, I'm making money uh, on minimum wage because I have four houses and it's rented out. I'll show you what happened there in the States. So that's what's happening right now in Canada. And so when, when you're using tenants to pay off your mortgage, and the, an economy hits where jobs are no longer a plenty. What will happen is uh, those tenants may be fewer and far between. So what happens? Uh, you can't find tenants. You're still on the hook for those mortgages, second, third place, and now you're scrambling to find ways to pay that off because you can't find proper tenants or quality, higher quality tenants that will, you know, pay on time or you pay pay their rent on time. That sort of thing. So um, I've seen it in two, 2008. It's going to be much worse because the jobs are just not as many as they were uh, in 08. And that was pretty bad too. So you need to factor these in on the forward outlook of, of leveraging up, uh, you know, thinking that you're going to make money from real estate. The other thing is you need to understand about the franchising is exact, exactly what I just mentioned. It's dependent upon the economy. If people are not working, people are not going to go out, people are not going to eat out as in restaurants, so on and so forth. So do keep that in mind. Okay, so this is Canada's financial picture. So let me just show you the Australian one. Now this is what's happening now, and I always use like to use Australia as the precursor. Okay, so any of these uh, charts can be found here at the stlouisfed.org and just enter in household debt to GDP. Now we're looking at Australia. Now if you look at Canada, we're at one, Oh, was that 101? Now, Australia is a little further along. So here, at 100, uh, where's 100? Uh, about here, yeah, 99.7. So you can see that debt level still started to continue and went up all the way up to 105. So what's going on right now in Australia? When you factor in the similarities economically, the similarities between uh, Canada and Australia is very similar. We depend on and Canada depend on the US as our largest uh, trading partner. Australia depends on China. So Australia has become a, basically a commodity economy. They, they have iron and some other natural resources that pretty well China is the only one that can import on, on certain levels. 
So same with us in Canada. We have oil and we have some fabricating for manufacturing for cars. So again, that's something dependent on the economy. The um, other problem is with uh, the you, you with uh, Canada, we have oil now. Oil prices down, so there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of basic, <laughs> excuse me hemorrhaging in Alberta where a lot of the oil is in Calgary specifically, and they're taking a hit. They're all coming to Ontario looking for work. So very similar to here back in 2015, as the debt levels start to go up, the economy somewhat starts to kind of pick up, but it's not. And what's happening is the quality of jobs is very minimal. <laughs> and what's happening is uh, uh, they're low quality paying jobs. So it's not really doing a whole lot for the economy of Australia. And uh, as far as I know, there's a lot of oversupply now in Melbourne as a city for real estate. I don't know, I can't confirm that. But um, at the end of the day, Household debt still continues to rise from 101 to uh, 105. So there's that. So let's look at the states and what happened to the states and why the states may be a little better off. But, you know, they're farther along than uh, both Australia and Canada. Now, this is what's happened in Australia. Same thing. So what we're looking at is if you look at all the debt level for the Americans is been continuing high, what happens if... It continues. Well, this is what continues. But because the U.S. is so huge, probably the largest um, country out there as, in the free, as a free market, not only that, but they are also um, third or fourth uh, highest population on the planet as a country. But they're big enough, so they hit a peak. 2008 comes. Same thing with real estate. Yes, there was some fraud going on at the banking level. But so what? People just didn't have jobs, and look what happens. Debt comes back down to a more manageable level from 87, went up to 97. Didn't quite go through 100, but close enough, and just dropped off. This is what happened in the meantime. I'm sure a lot of you probably lived through this. Uh, I'll give you an example. I had my uncle who had a property, uh, bought it in 91, I believe, in Phoenix, Arizona. $350,000, came up the year, sold it in about here. What did he sell the property for? Three hundred fifty grand. So he had the property for nearly 20 years, probably broke even on the investment, and it was tied up over 20 years. He could have traded something else and done better on in his investment, which obviously leads into his pension. Uh, but lucky for him, he worked for the U.S. government, so he's, he's good to go. All right, but... Here's, it hit the peak. So what happens here? Job loss galore. People lost jobs. Property value came crashing down. Probably real estate uh, values plummeted to maybe 50% in desirable uh, locations. In our case, Canada, probably obviously be Toronto and Vancouver. And uh, property values did come down quite a bit. So the debt level came off because a lot of the, these people uh, went into cash savings mode um, and pr probably a good chunk of them also walked away from their mortgages because they were underwater. I mean, you have a mortgage. Uh, now you have a, uh, a mortgage. Property value has declined in half, but you still owe two times the mortgage. So you're now financially underwater. So people basically handed back the keys of the house and walked away. And that's what happened. And as a result, for three, four years, uh, property values still continued to decline. Now, I don't think this will happen in, the, in Canada or Australia or let alone in the UK for these reasons. But you also have to understand that the, the, the governments of both uh, Canada, Australia, and US, and all the you know, pretty well Western countries have been crushed. Like their debt levels have been climbing and climbing and climbing. And at some point, it's gonna pop. And I know what the event will be. We'll talk about it another time. And that when that event happens, all hell will break loose and this event Back in 08 will be a walk in the park compared to what will happen in the markets. And it will radically change a lot of people's lives. But right now, um, this is what happened. Um, and as a result, the government, and I've been analyzing this, and believe me, for the last number of years, and I'm going to probably do a deep dive event on this, on what is happening and what the outlook most likely will play out. 
But in essence, the government has racked up debt to, to basically start the economy in the U.S., which is somewhat has happened. There has been a pop in the, um, in the, the stock market since Trump uh, came into office as president. Um, but it has not really changed a lot of people's lives, and that's why they voted them in. And basically what's happening is, is that Washington is a basket case, Canada is a basket case, the UK, I mean, this is just June, June uh, 9th, the day after the second election, and oh, no, no, third election, no, second and third election in the UK, uh, and she lost. Theresa May pretty well lost, they're hung, they'll probably have another election later in the year. And the UK government's in, in, in turmoil. The Australians have not done a whole lot. And then there's the Europeans that are just, well, let's just talk about the um, Muslim migrant situation. So things are not looking good for the West. And as a result, how does it affect you in your day-to-day -day job? Well, it does because I'm sure you're, you have not seen a significant salary in the last 20 years. That affects your retirement if you're using your real estate as a mode of an, a retirement, looking at this chart, I, I would not feel com comfortable with that. So uh, people are looking for alternative ways to, um, to, to, to guarantee income streams when they come into retirement. So as a result, um, the quality of jobs here are not the same. They're probably, I think there's a stat a few years ago in Ontario where uh, in Canada here, uh, 40, 5% of the pop working population do not make more than $2 more than minimum wage. And that's just the state of the economy. And I'm sure that can be reflected uh, throughout the West. Um, and don't think that the East and like China and Asia and wherever else is going to be any different. Because um, I don't think it will be. And here you can also see, um, I believe, uh, no, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I'll be doing deep dives into this uh, on the Outlook. So where do we go to find the better future? Now, as I said, um, a lot of people are now looking to find, you know, I want to understand indices and I want to understand ETFs and all that. That's fine, but this is what I do. You know, if you're new to all this, even investing, the simplest thing to do is just look up Wikipedia Okay, S&P 500, uh, 500 performance, and what, what, what the standard benchmark is for investing is um, this. Okay, very, very important. Now, there, there's a stat out there called um, the CG, CAGR, Compound Annual Growth Rate. This is how the wealthy get wealthy. Compounded interest on investments that they put out there. And, and, and if they live off that, that's compounded year after year. And it just compounds. And the power of that basically goes up like exponentially that you've never seen before. Now, I have an idea of my targets. I have an idea of what I need to do as a daily target to achieve these uh, sort of long-term investment returns that I'm looking for. Okay, so let's take a look at as an example. Um, now, I'm not going to get into all this investment stuff, but the, fa the key factor here, um, this is the uh, change in the index of the S&P 500, okay? Really, really important that people understand. This is the standard for benchmarking how your investment's doing. Using the S&P 500, uh, and uh, I just knew somebody who uh, was told, well, hey man, if you uh, have X amount of dollars in the bank and you get 7% every year, you'll be okay. You'll be able to maintain your, your uh, standard of living. I find that probably one of the most preposterous things to, to come back with. And the reason I say that is because when you look at the S&P 500, Okay, these are the annual returns of S&P 500. Now, here is the problem. Let's say over the last, uh, let's say since 2000, okay? So if you get a financial advisor telling you, hey, if you're earning 7% every year, you'll be okay. Um, so, let me just, 
you see these negatives, right? Negative 10, 13, 38, uh, 0.73. That's not exactly 7%. And regardless of wherever else you put your investment, you're still not going to achieve that target. Um, especially if the whole economy in Canada or the West, let's say, is in a what you call a falling knife uh, situation. No matter where you're at, they talk about diversification. Um, that's fine. <coughs> that's fine. But the what these financial analysts that are well paid don't really understand the complete picture of how the markets work and how long term investing is. These these guys are are idiots. I I find, and I've talked to more than enough, and I've just fully, um, fully. I just, I just don't like them and you're paying money to go to them to basically tell you stuff that is just preposterous. So when you look at the overall performance of the S&P 500, it's very going to be very difficult to maintain this level, this target over um, the long run. So I just want to make sure I'm looking at everything as, as I want. Okay, so... Let me just uh, get uh, uh, okay. So maybe it might be better to look at uh, the S and P five hundred overall. Okay, here we go. So the annual returns. So again, this is uh, since two thousand seven. Okay, so. You know, we have some targets here, but it's these kind of hits that's, that can wipe you out. If, if you have somebody who's not properly investing with proper guidance, proper outlook, you can get wiped out very quickly. Uh, Shalom, uh, somebody has, has, has shown that. Uh, you can get wiped out in no time, um, regardless of what type of investments you have. Okay, but here again, again, if somebody's being told to, to, to say, okay, well, if you're going to maintain 7% every year, uh, guess what? You can't guarantee that every year. You can probably guarantee it some of the time, as in this case. But as we move forward with the outlook of what I just highlighted, um, I think it's going to be pretty tough to maintain those levels of 7%, especially when you start hitting underperformance and these kind of negative returns. I mean, this is this is an anomaly for sure, but you got to be aware of that. So what do you do? Okay. So... Autopilot about investments is very, very, very important. Here, to protect yourself, um, you need to really understand the markets and you need to understand all the different asset classes, which I'm learning about options, currencies, um, futures, and the indices for stocks. On top of um, precious metals, real estate as part of that portfolio mix. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't think that's still going to guarantee you to get so-called seven or whatever your X amount of percent is as you uh, move towards retirement and living off of that, um, living off of that portfolio. It's, it can be um, a, a, a challenge. Okay, so what what I'm planning to do is I think you still need to generate cash all the way up to the day you die. Okay. That's going to be a guarantee. Now, the idea is to enable you to have, as what you would probably want with real estate, cash flow streams to guarantee that. Now, again, we've talked about the real estate, which is probably not a guaranteed way to, to um, you know, go to the bank, get levered up with a mortgage that you already can't afford to get two or three of those and relying on tenants to pay that off. But yet your tenant quality will drop as um, the economy uh, slows down, you can't get the right uh, tenants or even yet get a tenant period at all. Um, so moving forward, I, I wouldn't be going that down that route, all these other possibilities. So there is a mix that you need to have for generating cash. And a lot of that can come from the markets, not just the S&P, but a whole whack load of them. Not only that, but it's also smart to hold on to a certain percentage of precious metal outside the financial system. I think Moving forward, we're going to have the traditional financial system totally basically blow up and we need to safeguard what we have because, well, the way it's looking with bail-ins and whatnot, the government can come along and take it 
or attack us till we're pretty well dead. That's what happened in France um, at, was it 90% or 75% back in 08 and 09? Um, so, you know, that's not looking pretty. But there's a variety of ways to invest and know what um, to, where to put and buy a physical product like gold or silver uh, in case you can use that as a form of a hedge when other uh, parts of your portfolio drop. Okay, so that's what I'm planning to do in the next few weeks. So enough of the babbling. Um, so this led to this. So we're going to do uh, an entire event around this. I am wanting to bring in some experienced traders, hopefully with their experience and what they're planning to do. We're not needing to know numbers, but just your plan. Um, and we can have a whole dialogue around that. So uh, these are just certain examples of what to look for, uh, regardless of where you live or what you're planning to do. But I do think you need to have a guaranteed cash flow stream. Real estate is, is not, a, not a big deal, but I would not think, oh, well, now I've got real estate income or rental income coming in. I'm set. You're not. You're not done. That's, that's a good start. But you still need to um, broaden your horizon and get into better investments and stuff. So we're going to have that June 19th at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight uh, Time. And just come to this link here and I'll put the link. Um, also, I'll be putting that under uh, my events, which basically will take you to my uh, Facebook page for all my upcoming events. Okay, so, you know. That, that, that will be um, listed there. Okay, hopefully I'll help you out later.